Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO using a sub mod called TNO GFL Prelude to Change um, uh, which involves uh, the New Order Girls Frontline um, it's a demo for the official TNO sub mod TNO GFL to defy destiny it contains a small taste of the full sub mod uh, includes our New Order state called Griffin and Kroeger and uh, it's a security consultant company from the year 2062. So click on the entries to the left, feature past, uh, history of missile, missile line. Um, so we're a private military company, and uh, so if you're wondering about that, please go ahead, as well as our arrival. Uh, so there's that. The company itself, founded by, founded by Sir Griffin Lyons and Berzovich Kroeger, which I'm probably sure I'm saying wrong. We have Orosa Tres Legacy as well, as well as IOP. The important operation prototype manufacturing. So, the mod info. Uh, this is about uh, TNO mechanics, proxy wars, mod development, and all about all this stuff too. So, um, but yeah, I wanted to try this out because some people recommended it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm always interested, almost always interested in TNO sub mods. Strange new world. <coughs> We're still trying to make sense of the situation, but one thing's clear: we've been sent into a completely different world by means unknown. Reports are still coming in, but we certain are that this is still Earth, and more specifically, a region in northern central Siberia. Furthermore, uh, further details are impossible to verify as GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo are all completely unreachable. Attempts to analyze re received radio signals are underway, and this will be provided at the earliest opportunity to all field commanders such as yourself. Don't further notice, your orders are locked down and fortify your immediate surroundings and ensure open lines of communication with command. Stay safe out there, commander. A new headquarters. No human being, much less an army, can survive in the Siberian wilderness for long without shelter. If one alive expects to see longer than a few days, then the company must set up a shop properly in a location less affected by the elements. Thankfully, we do not need to look far. Within this forsaken patch of land is an old, seemingly old, Union era aerodome. Well, maybe an empty husk is much better than tents and improvised huts. Commander, you are reported to, uh, to the aerodome as soon as possible. Mr. Kroeger, or Krieger, is looking forward to your and everyone else's uh, reports. We're already arranging an office for you. Get comfortable. Looks like we'll be here for quite a while. 0.75 political power every single day, one more supply hub, and has, it has charm. Lost and confused. So we got some factories we can use as well here. Uh, we got one. There you go. Uh, roads? I don't know. Oh, so this is where we're, I thought we were up here. I guess not. Okay. Um, so this is where we're at right here. So here are five divisions. And we have uh, the T doll combat units. And our template are tactical dolls. And we have aerosol companies, which is very good, as well as scout helicopter companies. Very unique. Very special. I honestly don't know enough about this to really know or appreciate it, probably. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm on rating, but like... Hey, I guess we'll wait and see. Do we have anything over here? I don't even check this out yet. Uh, like I see the Siberian plan. Very cool. Warlord development, which is okay. Reunification of uh, these guys. So we can close that other one out. And wait to get some of that. And free military factories. We are definitely not going to have enough of anything here. Basic infantry rifles. Well, look, guys... We need a crap ton of stuff. Especially tactical dolls. So, occupy territories. If that's the case, where are the dolls at? We're playing with dolls. Um, do we need any more dolls? I guess improved anti tank. We're definitely going to need that. Single locomotive support equipment, motorized artillery. Um, proof scout helicopters because we definitely need that as well as transport and attack helis. Uh, early fighters and cas. Well, we're setting ourselves up for hopefully few or you know success, but we'll see. <coughs> Lost confused. No GPS. Your map's wrong. Most everyone we sent out has been shined or yelled at or ignored by locals. Those locals who have been willing to talk to us give information that seems straight out of a bad alternative history book. Speaking honestly, the whole situation is foobar. So I don't know why these, they have these little things up here, too. Um, Leon's. Uh, Kroger's eyes narrowed. A million thoughts coming in and out of his mind as Commander Gentain. Similar so situation to him and Leon's. Leon's, or Lion's, Cobb, bringing Kroger back into reality. Thank you. We've given us, you've given us more uh, than enough to work with. Nodding, Gentian gave a so a salute and swiftly walked out of the makeshift command center they had set up in the ruins of a small house. A temporary measure till they could find more permanent lodging. Kroeger was the first to speak up. So we're square one. Leon's. Leon gave his friend a, a side gl glance. It seemed so, my friend. Humming, Kroeger closed his eyes. We need to find a more permanent base than this. After all, we can assess losses and see what we need to do. As soon as Kroeger said that, a wall of inside the house 
collapse in and on itself, startle the two men. Yes, that would be the best course of action. Evaluate the situation. Command fire. Oh, let's get some more stability. <coughs> the analysis is in, and it's anything but pretty. We're not merely taken from our homes, but transported into an entirely different timeline altogether. Assuming intelligence is correct, the current year is 1962. But it's not the 1962 that we know. Details are sketchy at best, but we can confirm the absence of a central authority in Russia. In other words, we're not merely in the middle of Siberia and Siberia, but also surrounded by warlords on all sides. Primitives. When Rook is a contractor for the GNK, Andre will always wonder why he'd have to fight uh, uh, Savangis Ferry. Between the odd designs, downright insane clothing choices, and the energy weapons, he always thought that it sucked to be a GNK primitive. Yet here he was, examining the corpses of some unlucky sods who tried to take the potshots at his base. The crap is this. Picking up the now discarded weapon, Andre pulled it out the magazine and emptied the chamber, the bullet tumbling into coal rushing dirt below him. Homemade? Crap has to be with the construction like this. Stamped steel and rivets. Vintage. His fellow contractor and patrol partner took a look at the gun he held and shook, and shook his head after seeing it. Shoddy, but recently made his part, he concluded. Can you tell by the fact that there's no wear and tear, just dense? Crap, we're so, so we're being attacked by bandits wearing rags using homemade guns, Andre asked. His partner chuckled. Looks like it. Andre threw the submachine gun down and hauled the bodies back for an inspection. He wasn't sure where the heck SF was, but this experiment makes his life easier. And we'll also get some loot, too. It has charm. Gentane. Or Gentian. I wasn't exactly sure how he was meant to... She was meant to feel about the new headquarters that their boss had chosen. <coughs> Certainly better than the bombed out village they'd previously been using, but on the other hand, why was it so well maintained? Gentian knew you really, she really look, look a, should look a gifted horse in the mouth, but the place boggled her mind. The previous tenants, a group of ex Soviet military turned bandits, had somehow managed to keep the place in a semi decent condition. Where were they getting even the supplies to keep the absolutely massive airbase in good shape? Why were they even maintaining it? Why are the Soviets, the old ones, not the neo kind, but the build an absolutely massive aerodrome out in the middle of effing nowhere of central Siberia? How? Jintian heard a cough from behind her and grasping her train of thought. Turning around, she met the eyes of Commander Shi Jun, sympathy in his gaze. It's best not to think too deeply about all this. For sure, she could reply. He quickly walked away, yell uh, yelling to a group of tea dolls and disappearing around the corner with him. What, the actual screwball? Well, we also have a cup of uh, um, tea here. Peppermint tea. I'm eating founders. The boss of Sir Leon's, or I keep saying Leon's, Lions, has not been idle either. If I'm saying that wrong, please let me know. I know, I know I'm saying that wrong. Indeed, we... They have been having a closed-door conference as we speak. Situation being literally out of the ro our world, there's really much to talk about. O one can only hope that they'll find a way out of this mess. Pe uh, frying pan meets fire. Jin Tian stood in front of a collection of commanders that had made it to the staff meet. There were plenty of familiar faces that had come with them to the new HQ. Clearing her throat, she began. Good, she looked over the wall clock. Evening, everybody. I'll go ahead and rip off the bandit here for the sake of time. We're no longer in our own world. A wave of murmurs, mostly those of Dao, weaved its way across the crowd. Jin Tian... Jintian aside, clearing her throat again to get their attention back on her. We figured this out through the three major pieces of evidence. She gestured to the whiteboard set up behind her covered in red strings and pictures. One, there exists no artificial satellite with which we could connect to. Nothing which, unless the entire satellite network disappeared overnight, is inconceivable if we were to sail in our world. Two, the position we currently located within central Siberia was reported to have numerous ELID -E -E pockets. Since we're not being eaten alive, we can safely say that the NSU intel is wrong or we aren't in a world. And third, Jintian quickly flipped the whiteboard showing the last piece of evidence. A map marking out an NSU, NSU infrastructure, with every single one marked as missing. Our neo-Soviet friends seem to have vanished from central Siberia, which, unless they're playing a very serious prank or just decided to unveil everything down to the foundations, means where, well, and truly, somewhere else. Silence during the meeting room as their air got heavy, realization sinking in, the commander stood up, then what do we do about it now? Jin Tian's eyes hardened. Talk to the boss and sir at lines, and we'll make a plan. Simple general staff, disorder, anarchy, and chaos. But not any news, not news to us. For the company's founder to tackle these very foes in her time, but we cannot do so indefinitely, no matter how much we may recover from our arrivals, to sustain our operations ourselves. <clears throat> and we need not assume that this world is one in which we can must carve out a bloody path for survival. Though the malady of uh, warlordism afflicts a country, not all warlords are the same, nor are the ones uh, are they one in all hell bent on destruction, no matter how much lions may insist to the contrary. However, all these are empty words without a concrete plan to chew them. For that, we'll need our best and brightest minds. The boss and Sir Lyons know that well. They've already sent for all the frontline commanders to assemble for a meeting right now. That includes you, Commander. Oh, we get some uh, generals. Military professionalism will begin to improve. Nice. Oh, we got... Look at that. Pee pee. I just kind of want to raid. Oh, can we not raid? Bruh. I want to raid. I mean, we'd blow up everybody. Oh, actually, how's the economy looking? 8% growth. I, mean, I guess the GDP is really bad. Holy crap, deficit's not great either. Oh, I forgot about this too. Spend, spend, spend. Shoot me how deficit. There you go. I heard or that, but whatever. Um, okay. Uh, ensure the future. You and I, we have the opportunity of a lifetime before us. 
Yeah, he's willing to renounce it. Do mankind repeat its sorrowful tale, all for the nothing but the empty promises of a warlord with a split personality disorder? This is unacceptable. I refuse to be denied my opportunity by the selfish whims of a single man. If he will not fight of his own volition, then he must be forced to fight for his survival. And through that struggle, my friend, the future will at long last end our custodianship. Sending a message. Uh, so let's, walk, let's do this Siberian plan stuff. Now, we won't be able to get through all of this because it ends in 1965, but still. Uh, if anything, I'm going to get that growth. That growth is the most important. I talk between friends. Lions traced his finger along the wooden desk inside Kruger's new office. You contacted Tomsky, said? Kruger hunched over his said desk, revealing a new set of intel reports, grunted in response. I did. They seemed surprised that there was anyone with the radio out this way. Flipping a page, you looked up at Lions. They also confirmed some things for us. <clears throat> Lions raised an eyebrow at that before seating himself in the swivel chair placed in front of the desk. That being... Kruger grabbed the cigar sitting in the ashtray on his desk and took a puff. They were most definitely in a new world. Ask them if they knew anything about the NSU. Uh, pretty sure they thought I'd gone crazy. He told me the Soviet Union hadn't existed since the Nazis kicked down the door and the Red Army got decimated. Silver lining, though, they said they can keep the Aerodome. We can keep it. At that, both Lion's eyebrow shot up and he leaned on even more interested. They tell me we're in a world where Nazi Germany won? Kruger nodded, putting the cigar down. Yeah. Reports from the Intel team have given me confirming it. Confirmation as well. Combine that with the recent fall of the Central Soviet Republic, the people who came in after the Soviets were kicked out and were in a lawless wasteland. Leon's finished. Leon's? Lions. Kruger nodded pretty much. I'm going to contact Tom Skin on all likelihood if only see they know where some of our people have gone. Lions nodded along, his mind long since wandered off. Ensuring the future. <clears throat> oh, wait, I just read this one. <coughs> More command power? Nice. Army experience? Nice. Conflicting visions. Isn't it, ain't it obvious? We've been sent here to restore order, bringing hope to these people. Why else would be? Why would so much come with us? We're supposed to be a shiny beacon, aren't we? We're not supposed to be working with people who caused all this in the first place. Restore order, bring hope. With all that, with what dolls and what ammo? With what vehicles? We've only barely gotten our feet on the ground, and you want to go around preaching the good word of the company? Are you insane? Lions watch Kruger as the meeting devolved into a near pointless shouting match. One side calling to become nation builders, the other side to fold in a task. An idea that emerged when Kruger had informed everyone that Tomsk had been very eager to work with the company. Kruger slammed his fist on the table and set up in the set up in the middle of the room, both silencing everybody. Kruger focused in on the crowd in front of him. We're in no state of acting as a government. We don't even know our new neighbors. Much less the situation we found ourselves in. I'll see you about talking to Tomsk in terms of employment. He yells about rage came almost immediately. Silence, Kruger yelled. It's clear to me that we cannot form a clear consensus on this. We'll simply not survive on our own. I'll not hear any more about nation building. We are a PMC, and that is what we're always going to be. Sighing, Kruger grabbed a hand across his face, meaning adjourn. Leon's lions. Watch on as everyone left, one by one, remembering specific faces as they passed him. This meeting had been everything he needed, and he didn't need to speak a word. Lion stopped being a commander and invited to a talk. Stopped the commander and invited him to talk, yeah. Now we turn it back. <clears throat> How did things break down so quickly? Tom's got bush lions, or at least it seems to be that way. Well, I would have liked to look into this despair, where the situation as a whole being suspicious, I don't have time nor map for despair. Commanders are going rogue, taking forces to retaliate against known Tom's garrisons. I need to rein them in before we can do anything else. Conflict is ine inevitable now. With multiple units out in the field, soon to be commanderless, we'll need to be reorganized. I suppose that the silver line is that I have a clear idea who will take over overall command. Diary entry number one. The corner of the old leather-bound notebooks had said 2062, printed out in bold blue letters. They've already been crossed out and replaced by 1962. <clears throat> Hastily written beneath them. A fountain pen and a glid, glid, a glide, glid from uh, line to line on its evenly spaced out lines, a trajectory guided, guided by lines right hand. I find it ever harder to tolerate Kruger's stubbornness, despite our circumstances. In the holy outlandish scenario we find ourselves in, he refuses even the smallest of changes. Even with all of our advantages, he remains a man of little vision or ambition beyond surviving until Friday afternoon here, amidst the Siberian wastes. Where the winter takes off, he is still insistently sticking to a path of a mercenary. Such would mean willingly discarding the most fantastic opportunity of a lifetime, not just for himself, but for the whole company, myself included. I cannot accept that outcome, not merely due to it being Kruger's folly, but that Mr. Rosartza's cause would be permanently crippled if this were to go unimpeded. I refuse to be denied even the opportunity to fulfill his vision. If Kruger wishes to be mercenary, then we must deny him the possibility of employment. Though that alone will not suffice, he must be convinced of the inevitability, the inescapability of conflict with the warlords. Therefore, an event must be engineered to not merely present the company as a new contender to the rest of Siberia, but also instill on the company's staff that the rest of Siberia is an existential threat to them. I thought they must de destroy it to guarantee their own survival. Among our options, a border clash provoked by those forces at my disposal in disguise as a probing attack, with the city of Tomsk satisfies all criteria. With such an event, even Kruger will be compelled to assert himself in the region, under a misguided sense of self-defense no less. And the operation is already underway. So, oh, uh, just in case, let's go over here. Oh, we also have, where is everybody? Oh, not good. We have nothing to spare. Not good. We also have, where is IOP? Uh, important operations prototype manufacturing company. Ooh. And Legacy like of Siberian Plan, which we're going to try to continue working on. Sending a message. <clears throat> 
Lions, watch your old gold up here in Wasteland rolling by as he sat in the cab of the truck. His eyes focused on nothing particular as he waited to be delivered to the remains of the ambush. Feeling the truck pull to a stop, Lions waited as he heard Colbury walk up to the truck's cab and open the door for him. Getting out, he looked upon what could only be described as an organized chaos. He has selected a commander, a woman who, even by his standards, lacked morals, stood in front of a burning wreck of the G&K transport truck, a cigarette in her mouth. Looking around, he could see the bodies of multiple tea dolls they had selected to be the unfortunate casualties of the ambush. Walking up next to her, Li <coughs> Lyons placed his walking cane in front of him and rested his both hands over its top. I assume everything went to plan. The commander turned to him, giving his lazy sloop without a hitch. Too good, almost. Got the bodies of the official's bodyguard set up in the tree lines. I got the selected uh, dolls prettied up and looked look like they were caught unaware. Why have the course of even after repairs? No one will know how this all happened, well, excluding the Tomsk officials you fingered out, and it just, it just made out fine. Lion's not in satisfaction. Good, you've done an excellent job. I'll make sure you're properly compensated soon. The commander took the cigarette out of her mouth and flicked it into the mud. Good here now, excuse me, I've got to take the official pictures for the report. Lion's waved her away and returned to his truck, pretending that the talk never, ever happened. Nice. <coughs> War of Lightning. While well, I managed to rain some of our more zealous command staff, we are already in too deep. Pulling out forces in the field would now be disastrous, as we leave them vulnerable to attack and destroy the morale. What has started out as a simple set of skirmishes have evolved into a full-blown border war, one which we need to end now quickly. Jin Tian already has friendly forces moving in to support those stuck in the AO. Let's hope it's enough. Oh boy, start a border war. More speed, less division organization loss when moving, and what's the fuck is pretty good. No boiling, boiling point. You're, uh, <clears throat> they sure the supports are here? This, don't add up. Flip through the pages. Jin Tian gave a brief second look up. Up uh, well, until recently, the locals were content to live and let live. Estimates were around half a year or more before they started pushing for outright conflict. Seems so, seeing as it seems that they sent a fairly light force to ambush lines. Kruger's face twisted from a neutral frown into a scowl, so hoping to avoid this with the talks, but... But, Jin Tian asked. Jin Tian. Tomsk hasn't given his choice, and staff has gone for blood. Can't exactly talk him down either. Emotions are running high, and a few commanders have already taken it upon themselves to retaliate. Jin Tian's mouth fell open. She tripped on herself in surprise and confusion. She tried to protest before Kruger stopped her. It's out of her control, Jin Tian. Kruger kept his gaze forward. They're already sending dolls and what little staff we have left to die. While I am deal with the rogue commanders, I need you to command the forces that are already out there. Stopping in front of a large door, Kruger pulled out an ID card from his coat, swiped it through the makeshift card reader on the side, and walked into the room, Jin Tian quickly trailing behind. As the two walked in, Kruger flicked on the lights, and Jin Tian was surprised for the second time. In front of them was a near-perfect recreation of the Sector 9's Tactical Operation Center of modern touchscreens, computers and all. Jin Tian looked on amazed. Wouldn't it be... how? Nothing but the best for commanders, even less in ideal situations. You know what to do, Jin Tian. Lo log in is the same as before. Where do I even start? <coughs> so you can... Do your control, huh? They could raid us, but we're gonna go with equipment. And which one's best? I like construction speed. Mm, gain any capacity? Gain any capacity? Maybe uh, rerun this production facility. So. Oh, they already are fighting a border war right now, so. God dang it. Actually, that might not be a bad thing for us. Come on. Save it real quick, just in case. But also, if you want to look at the mod for yourself, it'll be the first link in the description below, at least at the time of this recording. You never know how things end up with uh, TNO and whatnot, so... I wish they'd come and try to raid us, but... <coughs> I guess not. Military officer probably wouldn't be a good thing to do. Oh, that, that GDP ratio is not looking good. 40%, oh my god. Oh my god, stop it now, stop it. We can't do external investments if we need to. Increasing total by totaling 0 0.03. There you go. Okay, I can't let the Siberian win. The conflict against Tom's cast thankfully resolved itself in our favor. It's good to know that despite being a completely new environment, our fundamentals are still sound. Well, it's the greatest test we face in the new world, and given that we've been unable to establish a way home yet, we're going to have to make the most of our time here in Russia. The next few months, probably years, will test the very relationship that built the company foundations. It'll be hard, it won't be pretty. We're going to find a way anyway to survive in this frozen hellscape. No, what happens after? No one knows. Look at all that army speed we're getting. Oh, beautiful. Fighting nobody. I love it. High speed. Uh, G36 watches their fellow dolls and the few combat unit staff members talked in the back of the truck they were in, speeding along the dirty back roads towards an up uh, four garrison they've been assigned to clear. She thought of simpler days, and the biggest problem she had was some guest ferry and seeming almost the cartoonish, cartoonish plans. Uh, taking care of Miss Springfield's cafe when they were a security company and not. 
um, what, what were they known? Survivors? Wannabe warlords take like their neighbors? Like her, many other dolls and humans had wanted to go home, but as the days passed, things were revealed that she found herself in a smaller and smaller group. She hadn't been sure when the commanders had got the idea on them that they were supposed to rebuild this country. Maybe it had been at that meeting with the Gentian. But the truth had been revealed that they had been sent to another world. Maybe it had been after that. And it came to them up for their minds, the staff meeting that would send lions into the ambush and start this whole chain of events. It didn't matter now. Blow would be spilled. She took on the collar of the uniform she was wearing. Everyone had been given a standardized kit for the sake of logistics. A part of her mismade uniform. As ridiculous as it was, it had become part of her identity. G36 hoped they could go home that soon and forget all that this had happened. Nobody noticed her brooding behind the ever present scowl. What's going on in Thailand here? Do they have unique focus yet? They're doing stuff down there though. I doubt any of these guys really have unique focus yet. Viet Minh exists as well, which is kind of cool. Empire Vietnam. Oh! Oh! Okay, so eventually we can raid. Okay. <coughs> Good to know. Good to know. So can we win now? Not good. 90, oh, Schnecky's 90%. Yay! We did it. Oh, look at this. A long haul. Here comes the snow, Commander. It's going to take us a while to get back up things up and march through all of Siberia. The snow hates us, the ground hates us, and even the locals hate us. For now, at least, we have no time to rest and need to get moving, else we'll get lagged behind everything and everyone else. I'd rather bite my own foot than fall into the hand of a bunch of anarchists. Where there's snow, there's anarchy. Breaking the surrounding regions under our full control has been painful. Anarchists, corporate remnants, communists, extremists have been sieging disputed regions. And I'm willing to bet that they are still going to add it. Regardless, I believe you can do an exemplary job at securing these regions. God's we didn't take care. We're gonna need uh, more money. Where is everybody? That's not bad to do. Prepare the tender. War for the company decisions. We are surrounded. Clarity of command. No restrictions. Get more attack. Open the floodgates. Ooh, growth goes up by 0.75%. To combat Kruger's influence on the company, do your duty. A common future. Ooh, even more growth. Because he isn't. Thin red line. Setting the stage. Or checking the books. Ooh, let me give him admin efficiency. I like that too. But the growth. Which side are you on? Oh, we have more growth here too. Papyri gets it improves, and admin efficiency does as well. You lose stability though. More growth gets more stability. Kruger's watching. Connecting the dots. Uh, no commander left behind. I like this one as well. Get more stability too. You signed up for this. Spend more money, get stability, and get planning speed. So you basically do the same thing, but you want to spend more stability? Or do you use You signed up for this? Let's keep it brief. Hurry up and wait. It's not bad. A team again as well. I apologize if you hear anything high pitch in the background. I'm doing laundry at the same time now. Um, GDP growth plus 0.5%. That could be very useful. Dope and beer. Fuel gain, army cost modifier. Ooh, that'd be very good actually right now. I might actually race towards Zach because we are hurting for money. Um, well, I guess logistics run the world. Before we were transported to this world, we had a solid logistical system going. We contacted in the right places and the support of the NSU and made procuring much needed goods and supplies much easier. That rug has now been pulled from up, from under us. We're in uncharted territory as much as we hate to admit it. We're reduced to the same level of raiding and scavenging that our neighbors are resorting to, but that doesn't mean we have to change our MO. We don't have to have operational flexibility to know how to really stick any, to anything else, and we really don't need to shock the staff with even more drastic changes. Get the scout teams ready, Commander. We need to figure out our supply situation here out and fast. In the meantime, um, I want to do this, but it, it costs so much extra money to do that, and we have like no money. So we're gonna go ahead and do warlord development and external investments. Let's create state GDP. Is this a lot? No, but it's gonna help us out. Long haul. I'd like to see a Siberian plan. Not bad. I do want to raid our neighbors though. I really do. Please have like money. I want. I want to raid your booties, please. <coughs> no booty raiding. Darn it. I want to. I really want to. Sixty-nine. Nice. Point five percent. Oh, 
Yeah, that costs. If we get a lower, that'd be so much better. We get more daily political power. Um, yeah, getting this would be. Looks like it's a be a good thing for us. Griffin trucking. Increase our GB by twenty percent. Uh, if we wait, uh, get more growth here as well, though. Research speed. Uh, Kalina's nightmare. Back in our world, there really only need to be one person to handle the day-to-day -day operations that we're running. Kalina's now been dumped into a brand new world with none of the support staff around her that she'd become accustomed to. Let's give our adjutant a hand here. She's got a mount of paperwork and reports to sort through with several teams in the field constantly badging her for needed supplies. We'll des designate some of the G and K personnel to help with the right combat reports and process intelligence we're getting from our field operatives. Someone remind me to buy something from her shop when we get out of this mess? So Gomez dies, huh? Foggy future. Well, at least we got more political power. Well, we don't really get more political power because we lost all that stability, but that sucks, but whatever. Buy dope and beer. Stockpiles are our empty, Commander. Everyone was so busy worrying about how we're going to manufacture tea dolls in this new world that we forgot to realize that we don't know how the production capacity to make best necessities like ammo and MREs. We've emphasized the importance of getting our logistics apparatus up and running. We need a temporary solution in the meantime. Kalina has contacted us about potentially buying some of these supplies from the nearby locals in exchange for money and the other valuables. Normally, such an act is completely out of the question, but we're in strange times. Let's hope she's as good as a negotiator as she is an administrative adjutant. Spends a little more money for that. Um, oh boy. Except for that one, we're going to go. I'm going to check, the, check in the books. We'll try this one. Something has happened to the company, something which has slowly galvanized my people into thinking that remaining independent is a good idea. That we strangers in a strange land should say how this world's future is shaped. This might be Earth, but it's not our Earth. We don't understand these people. We don't know the history. We don't know the struggles. None of it. Commander's called to take the mantle of her builder, reclaimer. Some say the company's arrived through force of arms, understanding of technology. Now Lyons started a line with them. I've seen him talk to these commanders, seen him host private talks. It's all very convenient, is it not? This one's safety is at our fingertips. It's janked away through an ambush that shouldn't have happened. Survivors all have the same store, and the dolls we recovered conveniently all have the core's damage with no way to recover their memories. We call it paranoia, but practicing the skills from my internal affairs day is on the people who trust me do not sit well with me. But when things are being hidden away from me in such a turbulent time, I'm being pushed to action. Clock in, clock out. I just want to raid. Uh, as Kalina sighed as she opened the door to her new office, with a singular light bulb that, she could, that could be spared to illuminate the starry room flickered weakly, a Siberian wind rattled in the windows. Despite having the exact same job, the environment could not have gone any worse. As she sat down in a scratchy old chair she, and noticed that the stack of paperwork on her desk had gotten so tall again that she couldn't see the door to her office. Galena, much like a lot of other staff, was no stranger to working overtime. But in these conditions, she wasn't sure if she could keep up with all the stress. Commanders were still missing all across the new Russia, and the few combat teams that had been assembled were running into all sorts of challenges, not present in their previous world. Straining her shoulder, Kalina reached for for the topmost port. She begrudgingly reached for a coffee, only to recall in shock that a fly had been floating in the drink for who knows how long. After her face, as her face dropped, her, her door, office door swung open. <coughs> Kalina, you work already? inquired a commander, holding a freshly brewed coffee pot. As I peered over the stack of ports, spotting the truth in Kalina's cup. Oh, sorry about that. Fresh cup? Please, I don't know how I'm going to get through these reports without one, Kalina said with a defeated tone. I, they just keep hollering up with no end of sight. Well, Kalina, I just want to stop by to tell you what a great job you've been doing so far, or whatever you've been doing. Keep it up. Let's commander finish pouring Kalina a cup. A cup? He took a stack of reports off Kalina's desk. I'll deal with these. Please don't forget we're a team here, okay? I'll talk to you soon. As he walked out of the office, Kalina smiled weakly. It helped her confidence so that she could see him leave through the door. Dope and beer, boys and girls. So, what's up, cat? 120, huh? Is it going up? It's fair. Oh. No, it's actually going down. God dang it. Military spending went up. Why did it go up? Oh. Griffin trucking. Furbish logistics is not bad. Increase their GDP by 20%, which we actually probably will need. Let's do this one first real quick. 4%, 101%. So that did that help? Um, yeah, it did help a little bit. Selling wholesale. Dimitri was always a suspicious man, but this deal, deal sank more than all of his others combined. A brand new group appearing out of the blue, and they didn't bother to haggle with them? This wasn't just a fever dream. Dimitri was about to make a killing off some very uninformed fools. As they shivered in the broken remains of a building, he saw a truck's headlight flash three times on the brick wall. He motioned to his two guards and got up from the rubble. Shooting his eyes from the bitterly cold air, he saw his buyers, a group of about six people, all holding weapons of some kind. As he began to walk forward, one of the buyers appeared to raise their weapons at him, only for another to immediately step in front. 
As we continue moving forward, the man turned around, revealing the weapon quite a guard to be a petite woman, dressed in clothes that were completely foreign to the smuggler. You're our supplier? Asked a burly man in front of the odd group. Dimitri was still a little too busy staring at the guard. She looked no older than 20 years old, wearing a black jacket with bright red highlights. She was holding a rifle that was far more advanced than anything Dimitri had ever seen. Uh, you are our supplier, yes? Dimitri broke his gaze, looking up at the man. Yeah, you sorry, payment? The man shook the briefcase in his hand, before handing it to Dimitri for inspection. As he opened the briefcase, he heard the man ordering the guards to retrieve the boxes of food and vodka. Stop mod AR-15, load these onto the truck, said the man, before turning around again to Dimitri. I assume everything is good with our end of the deal? Yes, pleasure doing business. So let's make sure speed, growth speed. Which side are you on? Support missions have always been a steady source of income and critical resources back home, and they can be seen here. The same here. They help us reach out to our na new neighbors, both local and not so local, for things we are so sorely lacking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that might not be good. I guess we'll have to wait and see them. Um, that's a case. Oh, wow, that's pretty fast, actually. 4% is not enough. Checking the books. Working with the locals. Or probably no commander left behind. As our scout teams mentioned earlier, commander, there are other commanders scattered throughout the various other Siberian statelets. We're still trying to understand how they ended up there, and then not here. It isn't rocket sense to us that they should try to bring our boys home as soon as possible. These people are family, we're not going to leave a single one of them behind, no matter what. We should mobilize our insertion teams as soon as possible to try and extract the commanders that have contacted us. Kalina's getting near hourly reports of new commanders that are scattered deep in enemy lines, but every single one of them that we bring back is another person here in our organization that understands their practices and way of life to a T. We need every advantage we can get, we need to get them out of there before our rivals find them instead. That's your reception, eh? Oh, what is this? Alright, so. <coughs> As Griffin and Kroger. Kroger? Kruger, navigate the two third through turbulent times. Um, Griffin Lyons and Berezovich Kruger both attempt to gain the upper hand in the war for the company. Is uh, available decision to shift the balance of influence to the chosen side. The influence of the chosen side must be at least seventy percent when the time arrives. Not doing so will lead to potential crisis. It's at risk. Co company cohesion is at it is. Griffin and Kruger stand at a crossroads. The company's namesake tear seek to tear each other down. One in the hope of saving his company, the people. The other in hope of building something new and yet still somewhat old. Friends now turn better rivals. Kruger must not face lions in the shadow for his company. Lions offers no respite, no peace, and will stop at nothing to control and destroy Kruger's life's work. So this cannot cannot come to be. The company will survive. There isn't any other possibility. I can simply accept. Commander refuse. Commanders are often given much free reign to do as they see fit, as long as the mission is complete. Sometimes forget what they're fighting for and simply just need a meeting with the boss or be reacquainted with whom they're actually employed to and see what they're actually fighting for. <coughs> Command meeting. A meeting is a great way to truly figure out what's happening in the company. Open uh, an open forum can often give clues of what's actually happening in each command station and looking and what they're doing if you know what to look for. Let's just do both. Well, for now we're gonna close out of this one because money wise we're not looking great. How's the organization? It's gr good. Hey, they paid the tribute. Nice. It's not much, but it'll help. How oh, this costs so much more money to do. And we're going to shot just right back up. It's at risk. Where are we at? 38, 8 and a half, 61 and a half. Infrastructure. <coughs> Working with the locals. No, documents that bind. Did you know that documents are greater to catch someone? They can, they can be thrown away, shredded, or even falsified, but their na mere presence or lack thereof can be a hint to what might or might not be happening. All one needs to do is follow the trail with an experienced eye. It's no harder to follow said trail than one might have a leisurely stroll. Combine this with the other evidence that you may have found, and you can quite quickly start to find leaks and motives. And ask your reception. So for the gosh, gosh darn time, your name, shouted the guard, jamming his fist in the winter's stomach. The guard was not used to actually someone this resistance interrogation, but normally, most people fold within an hour of getting beaten, but this man was different in every possible way. His uniform was something the guard had never seen before, and to make matters even more ridiculous, the prisoner didn't seem able to speak, speak a lick of Russian. His distinctive maroon long coat and black tie 
were not standard uh, uh, Soviet issue. Oh, Guido. Uh, it had been nearly four hours since the patrol on the outskirts of Kants has spotted him, only for the prisoner to try and wrestle a weapon out of the one of the patrol's hands. Uh, Commander Winters is just as confused as the guard was. For all I can remember, he was just busy assigning T dollars to various expeditions and explorations when a flash of light blinded him. For new, it is in some desolate code way, some of people shouting foreign language at him. All the while pointing in K's, and his current situation seemed to be deteriorating by the minute, with no real solution inside her mind. The guard started walking towards the cellar door. Stupid idiot. I swear the patrol just saddles us with these morons. The guard was cut off by an explosion, blowing a sizable gap on the side of the cell. With the ringing of the explosion still in his ears, he felt someone go behind him and cut the t ropes tying him to the chair. Looking up, he saw extended arms of the rescuers, M16 and M4. Winter's M16, said in a monotone voice. Can you walk? As he weakly stood, brushing the grime dirt off his uniform. He looked over the slump guard, ripping the patch off their uniform. Yeah, I can. Let's get out of here. <coughs> Shadow, you on. It's going clear and clear that the people are not aligned with my own vision of how the company should proceed. Unacceptable. You cannot be spending any of the factions, putting the, pulling the companies in different directions. Before I can start figuring out who I need to be talking to, I will need to know where everyone stands and what side they stand on. Yeah, that'd be probably good to do. Where are we at? Two and a half percent, huh? Asking questions here. Look at this one. From our reports, both Leon's lions and his selected commanders, the ambush was obviously planned by Tomsk to remove us so that they reclaim control of the territory we were staying in. That explanation becomes more and more flimsy the more I investigate. It certainly doesn't help that Lyons has been unclear with the exact details of the ambush, and in every regard, Commander and Dahl he selected for the mission tells the same story down to the same details. Well, I'm not sure if Lyons is to blame for here or not. I know what happened in the ambush. I need a clear picture of what happened and how it happened. Not good. We could do a temp tax hike, but that really wouldn't help us, per se. Form 2065. <coughs> I'm hesitant to do this to my people, but as they work better under less supervision. But with my current investigation, my hand is, my hand is forced. Form 2065 will be a tool to sniff out all activity from within the company. Previously, many were allowed to do anything they wanted with little to no oversight. Now, many previously unsupervised tasks now require someone to supervise. It's simply a nice coincidence that everyone who supervises is someone I can place my trust in. First I'm figuring out a conspiracy, figuring out who works for who. Asking for some discreet questions, looking around is more than enough to figure out who works for who. I just we can't do that anymore. Dead is critical. I guess the point, all we can do is really just raid. Bro, this kind of sucks. <coughs> People's Apocalypse. Are you going to this? Please go ahead. Work with the locals. Support missions are a good start, but we wish to build a good report to the locals. Getting closer would be ideal. A small outpost, larger FOBs, or even general use support drones in collaboration with the locals help us build stronger ties. This guarantees our people's safety when moving through their lands and offers us an avenue for future work once we figure out a situation. Please just let me raid people. It's the best way for us to get money. Six months of uh, fiscal crisis. Step to revision. Form 2065, simple piece of paper, innocent at face value, however, in execution, to open a Kruger's influence. Certain actions that previously didn't require supervision now suddenly do, so Form uh, 2065 serves to prove that said action was supervised. The fact that Form 2065 falls into the hands of only those who we trust is purely a coincidence. Absolutely. Asking questions. My inquiries and investigations have borne fruit. Now I know who's working to, to the benefit of the company, those who are misguided, and those who are rogue assets. While our removal of them would only hurt the company, we're still lacking critical manpower. I can let these cri traders simply go by or go on as they have. More important, however, is the information they have. Perhaps these commanders, staff members, and dolls can enlighten me on what exactly is happening within my company. Now it's up to you in your pastures. Peter couldn't believe the amount of forms his new home required forms to fill out. 
Originally captured by a raid from a group he had never heard of, he found his new position to be slightly more com uh, comfier than his old position in Camarobo. Well, things didn't make sense here. He saw the equipment that the men and women were maintaining in the garage before he was escorted into a cell, thankfully for him. He had been a cook for Camarobo Old Blast for over 15 years, and that was more than enough to get him out of a moldy, damp cell and into an office doing what he did best. Except in the three weeks since being liberated, there had been two new forms instituted by his new leader. Kruger was his name. Peter suddenly groaned every time he saw the leader's red coat approaching his office, and shortly before announcing a new protocol that was needed in order to safeguard Griffin and, and Kruger from external threats. Better work for an insane-looking government official with higher-tech equipment than one, with, one without, thought Peter. He didn't really understand their past or the current actions, but his superior called him the, the best at perceiving or processing civilian expense records, and even had a bunch of other workers shadowing him to the room. He thought about potentially bringing up the amount of frankly unnecessary paperwork that was being introduced on a near-weekly basis to his superior. Maybe today was a day. If they respected him truly as one of the best, and didn't just see him as some paper, a paper pusher. They listened, as foreign as they were. But just as Peter got up, he spotted the signature red coat out of the corner of his eye. Muttering a curse under his breath, he turned and saluted Kruger. Peter could always see him holding a copy of something. Form 2065? You have to be effing joking me. God dang it. We can raid our way to safety, right? It's in Kruger's favor. <coughs> oh. Oh, hello. Tomsk is now blue. Further by Zan Shostakovich. Sakharov. Nice. Working with them locals. Asking questions. <coughs> Kruger's watching. On the outside, the company works as usual. Uh, Sack going about their duties. Commanders are organized their combat units, and I'm sure all of it runs smoothly. To those who look closer, however, one will see the, see the sun shift in supervision. Eyes in the sky, ears in the walls. Operators and commanders watching every your every move. Invisible strings and rope. Blind, bind everyone into working for the company. Everyone has a duty, so get out there and do it. Wow, we are. Oh boy. Ooh, this doesn't look good. Well, if we don't do well, then we don't do well. But you know, we'll see if we do well or not. Give us one second here. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, we're slowly winning. Oh, they have broken our ciphers? Make an advantage. Well, alright. Kruger's watching. Oh, we won. Yeah, that was easy. 200% of monthly income? Well, help lower it just a little bit. Maybe the rating our way will not be the way to do this, but whatever. You're not in the dots. What happened with Tom? The red lines all lead to one person, Lions. Did he do something wrong in that meeting with Tom? Did they really ambush us, or was it something more? What happened, Lions? What happened? What happened? What happened? Hazard pay. Spend more money. Honestly, I don't want to spend any more money. I don't want to lose stability, but I'd rather lose stability than more money, because we literally can't afford it now. So, yeah. We're kind of in a pickle. I'm sure, like, we cost wasn't so high, or like everything didn't cost so much, but like, bro. Big boss. Asking for doll assistance. Dolls are loyal to a fault and more than willing to work with Kruger. Uh, dolls are present all layers of the company. There aren't many places you can go. Or doll isn't making them a deal for overhearing things they weren't supposed to hear. It's hard to hide when the walls have ears and eyes, so to speak. Uh, as I knew, Commander Shi Jun did his job well. Uh, he knew that this, along with Jen Tian, that the two commanders who saw the most work, saw the most action, and talked to the locals the most. Yet for some reason, he felt like he did something wrong. Kruger, who once rarely talked to him, seemed to find every time he was free. His own dolls mentioned that the locals and the nets were all light with activity, but not the usual kind. Questions filled the web, asking about where the commanders were going, who was there, where, and what dolls did what. Personnel gave him more paperwork, trying to literally... Tie him literally to his desk and leaving a trail behind him, metaphorically. Combat unit staff members could be found at every corner, and they always seem to watch his every step. 
Communications were monitored, he knew that for a fact. That little lag before a call connected wasn't something he was unfamiliar with, but it left him feeling weary. So Shi Jun worked, and worked hard. He only talked to people he could trust, did only things he could prove his loyalty, and took care of his people. No longer just doing so because it was in his oaths, the ones he swore upon when he had been hired. Uh, and also because if he didn't, he didn't want to know what would happen to him. Griffin Trucking. So here's a vast enough to your pocket of it, more so. Uh, none of our vehicles seem to have made the transfer over, so we're going to have to start from square one in that regard. Our logistics teams are running a pitiful efficiency. Without vehicles, as we established earlier, our little adventure here in Siberia would be dead in the water if we continue at our current pace. We'll focus on motorizing both the troops and logistics in order to prove our combat efficiency. Nope. We're going to try again, huh? Strength is not great, though. Their strength is just dwindling. Nice. Of all those people, but no one to kill it with. How much command power do we get every day? 0.38. Four months now. Get trucking. Or Griffin trucking. Road string game. Crew grows tired. Spend every waking hour protecting the company from its own decisions. Spend every minute rain raining the men, working against ever new and uh, evolving problems that seem to create just as he turned his back. But most importantly, he watched. He watched where people went, watched what dolls uh, uploaded, and watched commanders do their duties. He remembered their actions, logged in their conversations, and made sure to collect as much information as possible. For everything he had seen, everyone he kept an eye on, the red string seemingly led back to the lions. The paper trails, the confessions he had extracted from the rogue elements, the messages he intercepted here and there, it all led back to the lions in some way. It only served a few as paranoia. Had the ambush actually happened? Had Lions been truthful? Was everyone working towards the same goal? It didn't matter much anymore. He would be protect his company in whatever form it was to take. It was too tad. Late to do anything else. Hope dies last. Reintegrating the IOP. We're still trying to piece together who exactly made it over here in this, into this new Russia. Who did it? Thankfully, it seems as if a significant number of IOP personnel have made it over with us. Leaderless and directional as they may be, but these men and women are the brains behind the T-Doll program, and we need their expertise more than ever. We'll promote some of the senior members to leadership positions and get some ramshackle labs up and working so they can continue doing what they do best. That might be a far cry from what they're used to working with, but everyone's going to have to make do for a while here, at least until we find a way back. Happy November, everybody. Happy, happy November. Okay, oh my god, that's so much better now. Oh, Jesus. 99%? Oh, at least we're looking a bit spot better now. Jesus. I hope equality promised. Well, let's go with hazard pay. Oh, friends, nearly whole. Nearly whole. Well, I'd rather do this one. I know you all bled, bled fought and lost colleagues recently, so what I'm going to ask might consider insanity, but we're all in dire straits. The company cannot pay you our well earned hazard pay right now. What we can give now is worthless. Uh, and we'll explain exactly why in the briefing coming in the following days, but I need you to all remember the oaths that you swore upon joining the company. We're a family of the company, and by extension, those beside you came before anything else. And right now, we need your help. Your family needs your help. We might be able to compensate you in the future, but for now, remember your oaths, unless we all sink together in these frozen wastes. <coughs> the start of something. Javier considered himself quite adaptable, if he was going to be honest. When he'd been in the NSU Army, uh, he'd been proving himself twice over. He had the mental fortitude to survive, despite any condition. In IOP, he found he had the business savvy and drive that would lead him to become the CEO of one of the biggest producers and innovators in the doll industry. Yet here he was, back at nothing again. It's fairly sure men of his age and position were supposed to do half the things he was doing now, but that didn't matter. He'd adapt again. So he sat here, doing one of the things he did best before a CEO within IOP, and wrote reports. <clears throat> Javier turned in in his chair to see Kruger. His arms crossed, his brows furrowed with worry. Javier, have you people, uh, have you have people you can delegate to? You don't need to be doing this. Kruger took a few steps over and looked at the laptop. Even in the middle of writing a report for Kruger, since IOP as a company to cease to exist once they had transferred the worlds, Javier found themselves, found themselves in the full-time employee of Griffin and Kruger. Well, employment was a strong word. Javier knew how to take care of T-Dolls, and G&K knew how to use them. When, when, however, one day IOP would rise from the ashes of the world and stand on his own two feet. It's just a setback, one that he himself would correct. Returning to his sense, Javier chuckled. I, I, I know I do, Kruger, but... Also, that in times like this, we all must work together. Besides, shouldn't you be happy I'm working? You're technically my spirit now. Kruger's gay soft, and you're my friend, Javier, and even then at your age, Javier cut him off with the laughter. At my age, at my age, I'll do whatever I darn please. Let's keep it brief. Hmm, it's not bad. <coughs> but quality promised. IOP, that is. 
Everyone realized we'd been taken for something for granted. For what seems like an eternity, the contract was simple. We'd hand off resources to IOP and quality T dolls would come right out. The contracts have obviously been broken without our current position. That is, if you believe that the folks at IOP aren't capable of pulling off miracles, despite our current status as a rump state, they have managed to begin production and research again, despite obvious research shortages. And the current facility is not like being up to par with their standards. But much like everyone else here, the IOP is going to have to make it work for now as we establish our state. Reports are already coming in of uh, T dolls coming up fresh from the production queue. Now let's check the quality of the commander. Nice. <coughs> 16 Labs Lab. There's one noticeable advantage that we have over our Russian adversaries, our technology. We're bringing tech in from the late 2050s back a century, but with the chaos of our arrival, our best seed all technicians from 16 Labs don't have a home anymore. Greeted by Persicaria. 16 Labs IOP's cutting edge research develop, uh, division. Response for the second generation tactical dolls and a variety of other combat improvements that allowed us to push Sangvis, Sangvis ferry around in our time. There's no doubt the warlords around us will continue to develop the military forces, so we need to match them in kind. Given a manpower issue, maintaining our technological edges a must. Funds and materials will be allocated to 16 Lab immediately in order to give them a home and kickstart our research. Oh! Such a select a technology to research. Ooh. That's really cool. Um, I don't get planes eventually. Air support, ground support, air assault company, defense and organization. Because right now we have tactical dolls. Are you considered what? Are they considered anything? I assume infantry, but... Oh, they are considered infantry. Air Assault Company. You do get a bonus to these. You know what? We got them. We're going to go with the combined operations. I usually don't choose this one ever, but you know what? For now, let's make an exception. Um... <coughs> no rest for the wary. There's no doubt that everyone's tired and still confused from arrival here, but the ugly truth is that we need everyone to keep up the current pace as we solidify our grip on this pocket of Siberia. Well, that's the labs and officers need to stay on, and the personnel needed to keep working double shifts. And the worst part is, we have to lock them all, look them all in the eyes and tell them we don't have any idea when it'll stop. Because without them, we're causing the lives in this new world to surely come to an end. No vacancy, and here we are, a parasitic cup. The space we've earned marked for a 16 lab. Uh, it's a far cry from informant facilities, but we're working to. Kruger, it'll be fine. I appreciate you finding the room for us, said Persica. She scanned the dirty and dusty room, which seemed to be a former classroom. The blackboards were littered with old equ equations and formula from the previous occupants. Yes, well, the equipment you requested is on the way. I've told the rest of the staff that this is a new home, so they should be filtering in over the rest of the afternoon. I have them working on some other tasks right now, though. Persica stared blankly across the snow-covered Siberian landscape. It was nice and cold in the new lab, but starting from scratch was one heck of a challenge. But it's nothing she and the rest of the 16 lab couldn't rise up to. Persica knew that a griffin and Kruger was to survive was going to do on the back of T doll technology. 16 net lab. Needed to survive or needed to get to work immediately. Thanks, Kruger. Persica smiled. As Kruger began to leave, a sudden thought hit her mind. Her chest tightened and Persica leaned on one of the lab desks to balance herself. Kruger, did they make it? Kruger stopped holding the door open for open with his foot. He turned to her Persica and gave a simple nod. A wave of relief. Crash on a 16 labs founder as the door closed. <coughs> Let's keep it brief. Well, I'm not going to miss my words with you all. We're stuck. Now, before you all start proposing fixes, don't. We've mostly already likely tried whatever inane idea you came up with currently. Instead of trying to crap till it sticks, Command has thought it prudent to get you briefed on where, we're, where we are exactly and what's happening. Unfortunately, it's also very complicated. Here's a condensed version. I forgot about this too. There you go. Critical debt, yeah. Oh, oh we need command part for this one. No. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hurry up and wait. Now, now that we got the mess of the world history or out of the way, we got to get everyone's favorite part: postings. I don't want to hear anyone. We still got a job to do. Our upper command staff figured out a way to get us back home. Hopefully. Meanwhile, uh, I'll have you all refer to the briefing packets that you got handed to when you came in. You'll note that all your postings are muddy, frozen, heck hole, so start packing the winter gear and cold weather kit. Ain't gonna get better anytime soon. Disbelief. You're screwing with me. There's no way in the world we've been sent to a world where the Nazis of all countries won World War II. Gentian realized that out of the context of the initial briefing she had give, given a while back, what she was telling these commanders that had been re rescued recently was absolute insanity. A world where the USSR had fallen, where Stalin never came to power, and where Nazi Germany effectively embarrassed the Allies. To anyone who had studied World War II, it seemed illogical. Yep, it had come equally from an equally odd world. Robotic warfare, humanoid androids, and said humanoid androids rebelling, and that was just naming the stuff she could dealt with inside G&K. Crazy seemed to attract crazy. Sign she patted Commander Winter's back, I'm not, and there isn't exactly a silver line to all this. Everyone hates us and wants us dead, or hate us and wants a crap, or hate us and... Commander Winter cut her off, I get the idea. A frown crosses his face, I assume we have an intel briefing covering all this. It's all a little hard to believe, but Jin Tian not, we do, though I'm surprised this is hard for you to believe, seeing as you were literally held captive by some of the locals. Winter's grimace, so I just thought they were bandits or something. I knew it was odd to have a spec ops team save, sent to save me, but to be honest with you, I was just happy to not have being that silly anymore, Winter shivered. Jin Tian nodded, fair, I'll get to this intel briefing. To you, the next chance I get, and team again. It's quite honestly fortunate that some of your lower level command staff made it over. More than that, how many survived long enough for a rescue after a rather rough arrival? There were a few losses, but they'll probably be honored, and if we make it back home, their families and beneficiaries properly compensated. <coughs> now, however, we're a team again, reunited in the duty and purpose. Recon post ping a lot of staff meetings to evaluate the stranger, strange situation we found ourselves in, and our upper command staff look forward towards creating long lasting and long, long term stratagems that will see to our long term success. Do another temp tax like edging the bets or edging the head. Edge. Commander Winters wasn't sure what he, what did to deserve this. When he received a report on his new posting, he knew it was going to be bad, but this was awful. He could barely be considered a base. Uh, it was a glorified shiny town. Hasco barriers lined only one side of the base. The buildings he'd been promising were spare survival tents. The doll repair bay looked like it was one step breeze away from falling apart, and I had to mention the dolls he'd been assigned with. Commander IDW slammed him into him at Mach 5, throwing him into the snow and mud. Get the heck off me! Ripping off IDW, Commander Winters got up, holding IDW by the scruff of her neck, her ever-present smile still on her face as he held her. He would promise death, a painful death to the intel officer uh, that wrote his brief. Well, a few handgun dolls and one rifle doll to patrol and defend at least 500 acres of land. A base that was only qualified to be called a base because it had a singular repair bay. All that combined with standby orders meant that he had to permanently assign at least one echelon of his nearly non-existent dolls garrison standby duty, just in case he needed to be sent out to support an operation. Hurrying up and waiting, that's what I'm effing good at, apparently. Winter muttered to himself, walking to his command building. It didn't help that it was cold as heck as well. The dice cast. Sadly, there's no turning back now. The company stands poised for change, and whoever will be the victor of the war for the company will now be determined here and now. The question is, will the company survive this? Yeah, it should. Nice. Private talks. I just want... Oh, I got one over here. God dang it. Huh. I want to beat up the enemies. Oh, do you know? Oh, no. Nothing I really care about. Oh, everyone got that, so. Too bad we have to care about the economy. <coughs> We're already over the debt to GP ratio. Oh, that's not good. Inflation's going down at least. At least we're a team again. Alright, so now, where are we at? Foggy future. Nope, bear. Refurbished logistics. A new family. Legacy Siberian plan, you know. Was that it? Yeah, it must be it. Also, this is paternalism, a stratocracy, huh? Kruger versus communism. The die is cast. Well, cutting through the fog. There's been a fog over this company, a fog which seems to have been tied to lines and whatever he's doing. No more, we'll cut through it and figure out what exactly is happening. Nice. Where art thou, Lions? Sometimes simplest approach is the best. While it's clear Lions are connected to the ambush and Tom's set up in more ways than just being a victim, I don't know how exactly. I need to confirm him about this. He's my friend, I'm sure if I approach him with good intentions, so tell me the details I'm lacking. Right? Who pays you? 
More GDP would be very good actually right now. You can't hide from me anymore. I know you've been receiving funds from a third party. That tin of coffee, your sudden boons. I know you can't afford that. I know your sins. So tell me who's been paying you. Where do your loyalties lie? Oh, that's all really cool. Let's raid. Maybe some looty booty. And? Oh, they just give it to us. It's a little better, but... And who pays you, my friend? Who pays you? Civil Rights Act of 1963. What? Um, uh, more political power is nice, but we don't really need it. But putting up the hints, we need to stamp down on the internal communications public too to hide our last few steps, but it won't be anything new in the context of recent security and administrative reforms within the company. But we're going to end it there real quick, and we'll begin the next episode uh, basically getting rid of probably lions. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you do, maybe even share it. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do with uh, Griffin and Kruger. I think I'm saying their names right. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.